Thank you for calling McDonald's. This is Bernicia. How can I help you today? Uh, hello. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm okay. Uh, well, um, here, here's why I'm calling today. Uh, I was making breakfast this morning, and I thought, uh, you know what? I would like to have uh, an egg McMuffin for breakfast, which I, I used to do uh, every morning. I would go to work and I would get a, a, an egg McMuffin on my way to work. Um, but I no longer work, and so I wanted one at home. And I had some uh, English muffins and eggs, and I tried to make one myself, but I, I couldn't do it. It just tasted like an egg sandwich. So I guess I'm I'm calling for information on how to uh, make my own uh, egg McMuffins at home. Alrighty, and so if you don't mind, I'm gonna place you on a brief hold and locate some information for you. Okay. Okay. Well, am I speaking to the right department? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Oh well, I guess yeah. If you have to put me on hold, then I'll wait. Alrighty. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for holding, sir. I did go ahead and locate some information for you. Um, unfortunately, I can't provide you with that information. However, I can tell you can tell you the components that the egg McMuffin is made of. What, what information can't you tell me? As I said, I can tell you the components and I can give you the ingredients in the uh, sandwich itself. Uh, well, I have the ingredients. It's just egg and McMuffin, but I don't know how to make it taste like the ones in the restaurant. Well, I can always advise you to just visit one of your local restaurants and purchase the egg McMuffin from there. Well, I would do that, but I'm disabled and I can't go to the restaurant anymore. That's why I want to make them at home. Yeah, I do apologize, sir. I don't have that information to provide you with. Well, you said um, you have can... the information that you just can't tell it to me. No, I don't have the information to provide you with. I, I'm i sure that someone ha knows how to make the Egg McMuffin, but well, I don't who, have the information. Who, who there knows how to make the Egg McMuffin? You can inquire with your local restaurant. Well, I can't go there because, I, you know, again, I'm just I can provide you with the telephone number and you can call them. And they'll tell me how to make Egg McMuffins at my house? Well, I'm not quite sure if they'll tell you, but you can inquire and see if they will. Well, why wouldn't they tell me? I mean, it's a McDonald's trademark, sir. I'm not quite sure. Well, I'm not they're selling able to provide the egg McMuffins. These are for personal use. I'm not going. You know, I can I can sign a document that says that I have no intention of taking the trademark and using it to sell my own brand of Clarence sandwiches. I wouldn't do something like that. I just want to enjoy. Egg McMuffins that I've prepared for myself at home, you see. Alrighty, well, if you'd like, I can go ahead and locate your local restaurant, and you can inquire with them, and maybe they'll be able to provide you with that information. Well, what information do you have for me? As I said, I can tell you the components that uh, are inside of the Egg McMuffin sandwich, um, and that's the classic English muffin, the egg, uh, Canadian-style bacon, uh, cheese and salted butter. Okay, what what kind of cheese? Pasteurized processed American cheese. Pasteurized processed American cheese. Now, are you do you know what the process is, or is it just a generic type of processed cheese? No, sir, I don't know the exact process. I can tell you the ingredients in that cheese, which is milk, cream, water, cheese culture, sodium citrate, contains 2% or less of salt, citrate, X, acid, sodium, phosphate, where sorbic do I acid. The, now, if you're suggesting I make the cheese myself, where, where do I get, is it a specific kind of acid? In the cheese? Um, it just says citric acid. Oh, citric acid. 
So that's probably from, you know, lemons. Okay, so, well, let's, g if that's just the cheese, then you said. Mm -hmm. I can provide you with the ingredients of everything else. Well, let's start with the cheese, because I've, I have a feeling that that's probably the most important part. So mm -hmm. if I was going to make the cheese myself, I would need milk. And then what was the next one? Cream. Okay, cream, got that. Water. Water, sure. Cheese culture. Uh, um, does that go by a different name? Um, no, sir. I only have cheese culture in my system. Okay, well, I'll write that down and then uh, I'll go back to that later. What, what, I, what else would I need? Sodium citrate. Um, I, I don't know what that is. Is that, that you don't know what that is? Yes. What's sodium? Sodium nitrate, you said? Sodium citrate. Sodium citrate. Is, um, is that, do they sell that on Peapod, do you know? Um, I'm not quite sure. Okay, well, I'll, get, I'll, I'll check with them. I'll write that one down. And uh, what else do I need here for the cheese? Um, one second, sir. Uh, well, what was the one after the sodium um, citrate you said? Um, and that's the salt, and then it's citric acid. Salt and citric acid. Well, certainly no salt. That one shouldn't be too hard, I don't think. And that that about does it for the cheese, then, huh? Um, no, it actually has citric acid. It also contains sodium phosphate, sorbic acid, um, which is a preservative, um, a lactic acid, uh, ac acetic acid, um, enzymes, sodium phosphate, natural flavor, which is a dairy source, um, and then there's color added in soy lexidin, which is... Uh, for slice, that's okay. well, which is added for slice separation. We're going to have to come back to the cheese. What were what were the other main ingredients? Um, well, it contains the English muffin, uh, the egg, uh, Canadian oh, the English, style bacon. The English muffin, I can just get Thomas's brand English muffins. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the English muffin is probably not uh, the key to making uh, a proper egg McMuffin. That's we'll just go with Thomas's on that, and we're coming back to the cheese. And uh, what was the next one on the list there? And that'll be that Canadian style bacon. Okay. And uh, is that a special type? Of Canadian style bacon. Um, no, it's just Canadian style bacon. Okay. Now, we're cured with water, sugar, salt, and sodium lactate, uh, sodium phosphate, natural flavor, and sodium diatate and sodium nitrate. Um, is that more of the cheese ingredients? So some of these the same ones that are in the cheese. Um, some of them are the same, yes. Oh, well, perfect. Then I'll, I can buy those items in bulk for both the Canadian-style bacon and the cheese. That way mm -hmm. I save a bit of time while purchasing uh, all of my sodium uh, phosphates and uh, citrates, you said, sodium citrate. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know where I would... Where do you buy these things? I'm not quite sure, sir. Well, uh, where does and I McDonald's, do apologize for where that. Does McDonald's get them? Um, where do we get the ingredients? Right. 
Again, I'm not going to go into business selling my own sandwiches. I just... Unfortunately, like sir, I can't provide you with that information. I do apologize. Well, is it an American company? Is it an American company? Yes. The ingredients that we get for the egg McMuffin? Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you, uh, well, which company is it? As I said, sir, unfortunately, I can't provide you with that information. Okay. Well, what were the other ingredients, then? And the last ingredient is salted butter. Salted butter. Okay. Well, is there a sauce? Is, is there, there a sauce? Is there some kind no, of sir. sauce that goes in there? Yeah. No, sir. I just see that the last ingredient is salted butter. Well, what goes into um, Is it a special type of egg? It's made with a round egg. Well, wow. how do they get the egg so round? I guess I don't well, in the happens. restaurant, there are uh, little round rings that they place the egg inside of while it's cooking, and that's how they get it to that round shape. Now, if I wanted to order one of those, where, where would I get one of those? I'm not quite sure, sir. Maybe uh, Amazon. Can I place an order with you to have McDonald's send me one of these rings? Um, unfortunately, no, sir. I do apologize. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure it's even the circular shape of the egg that creates, I guess, the taste I'm looking for. Uh, and if it's not, uh, you know, if it's not salted butter or the English muffin itself or the bacon, it's, it has to be that cheese, which I thought in the first place. So I guess, I guess the the key ingredient is probably somewhere in that list of sodium. Sodium. Mm -hmm. What were they again? The, in between that, after the sodium citrate and before the preservative. Mm -hmm. Which one was that? You said which one had the preservative in it? No, on the list. In between the sodium citrate and the phosphate. The citric acid? Well, that's... Well, now, those I can just... If I'm making the cheese, that if I buy lemons, that's... Lemon juice is the acid. So I mix that with the water and the milk and these cheese cultures... And then mm -hmm. it's just a matter of finding uh, those sodium citrates, which you don't know what, where I would get those, right? No, I'm not quite sure, sir. And I do apologize. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and document that you were inquiring about how, how our egg McMuffin sandwich is prepared. And I'd like to send that over to our menu management team just so that they know that the sandwich is that popular. Their customers would like to make it at home. And before I send everything forward, I'd also like to go ahead and get some contact information from you as well. And so if you could start with your first and last name, sir, that'd be great. Well, my name is uh, Clarence. Said your first name is Clarence. Uh huh. And your last name? El Elmore. E L M O R E. And your mailing address? Uh, are you going to send me information on how to make the sandwiches? Um. Well, sir, it's just as a record of our call today. Oh, well, I'd rather not give out my address unless I was receiving information on how to make the sandwiches. All righty, and that's perfectly okay. I do still appreciate you calling today. And how about a, a telephone number for you? Uh, well, if you're going to contact me in the future, I would, I would prefer it would be for information on how to make the sandwich. I mean, are we still... Really haven't gotten that information yet. I mostly have just been confused by a list of cheese ingredients. Uh, you said the local restaurant will give me information on. on I'm not quite sure if they will or if they won't. Um, that's why I said if you'd like, I can look up your local restaurant for you and provide you with their telephone number. 
Okay, well, my zip code is uh, 78722. If you could find one near there, I guess I could call them. And I do apologize, sir. You said that zip code was what again? It's 78722. And what street is that restaurant located on? Oh, I'm not sure. There's a couple in the area. I, don't, I haven't been there in a while. I'm disabled now. Well, would you like me to just provide you with the telephone number for the restaurant nearest to you? Is there any way you could transfer me? Transfer you to that restaurant? Sure. Unfortunately, no, sir. I do apologize. Oh. And there's no one there that'll tell me how to make the sandwich. Unfortunately, as I said, we don't have that information to provide you with. Well, if I call the restaurant, do you think they'll tell me or no? I'm not quite sure, sir. I can't speak for the restaurant. I do apologize. So there's a chance they will or no? I mean, if using your best judgment as an employee of McDonald's. I mean, it's not about how I feel. It's more about how you feel about the situation. And that's why I said if you'd like that number, I can provide you with it. Um, unfortunately, as far as whether or not they'll provide you with the information, I'm not quite sure. And no. I don't want to give you an answer um, based off of my judgment and it be incorrect and you'd be upset or anything like that. And so, oh, I'm not going to um, be upset. I just, you know, I mean, I've spent a lot of time today and uh, yesterday, too, trying to make these sandwiches. I mean, it's already pretty late in the day now. I've been up since 4.45 in the morning, you know, trying to make... And I definitely do understand, and I do apologize, sir. Um, but as I said, it's more about now. how you feel about the situation, not I. Well, how I feel is I, you know, I'd prefer to just eat the sandwiches at home and, and, and be able to make them. Now, if I order one of these rings, you know, I would prefer to get the ring from McDonald's themselves that way you know I can be sure it's the same same kind of ring they're using in the restaurant if I were to go you know to an outside source I don't know if I'm getting the right shape and something's setting off the taste of the uh, muffin sandwiches I make at home versus the ones that I do remember from the store I mean I guess maybe it has been a long time since I've been to an actual McDonald's to eat one of the sandwiches in person, I mean, I guess, I, I suppose it could be that I'm just uh, remembering them differently than uh, than uh, what, what the sandwiches I'm making at home taste like. Is there any way to have the food delivered to my house? Unfortunately, no, sir. I do apologize. I probably should have started started with that rather than trying to make them myself. Yeah. On second thought, there's no any kind of supplementary delivery service that you know of. No, sir. Well, let me ask you this: Is there any menu item that you can tell me how to make myself? No, sir, and I do apologize for that as well. Now, do you know what the reason for that is? Um, well, being that McDonald's has a trademark on all of those products, unfortunately, we can't provide you with that information simply because we don't have the information. And as well as it is McDonald's information to keep to themselves. Well, I understand the trademark for, you know, business purposes. That makes sense, obviously. But, you know, I mean, you have a lot of customers that are senior citizens. I mean, myself personally, I've been a customer for probably 75 years prior. And, uh, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, again, steal any of the information to make my own sandwich making operation here. It's talking about at most maybe three or four egg McMuffins to myself per day and that's on an extreme end. I, I doubt I'll even be preparing that many sandwiches. Perhaps, you know, here or there maybe I'll have a friend come over and and they would have one but I'm, you know, I don't understand how it affects uh, with all, all due respect your company's business 
to such a degree that I can't just have the information on how to prepare the sandwiches myself. And I definitely do understand, sir, and I do apologize for the inconvenience. Um, now, I do have all that information documented, and as I said, I'll get it sent over to our menu management team so that they know how uh, that our customers are inquiring about how to make that product at home. And um, what, is, what is the menu management team? What do they do? Well, they're the managers of our menu department, meaning our menu products. So, but So they would have the information on how to make the sandwich. Well, I'm not quite sure about that, sir. I wouldn't know. Uh, is it, Can I speak to someone in that department? Unfortunately, as you said, sir, I can't transfer you over to any different department. I do uh, apologize. That's a phone. The phones don't work that way? Or hmm? The, the phones don't allow you to transfer me to another department? or? Well, all of the departments are not located in the same area, so... I wouldn't be able to transfer you to a department that's not located with me. Oh, well, um, if I, how, where is the menu management department? Do you have a phone number for them? Or? Unfortunately, no, sir. So when you contact them, how do you go about contacting them? We send everything over electronically. Through a Something fax? like an email. Oh, like an email. Oh, do you have an email address for them? No, sir. Well, how would you send the information over? Well, I document the information, and it gets sent over um, electronically, like I said. It sends on its own. But through an email? My my software is set up for the information to send on its own. Oh, so they don't have, uh, they don't have any contact information? No, sir. I do apologize. Is there another number I could call where I could get that number from another department, and then I could perhaps speak to somebody uh, over there who could uh... unfortunately no sir and I do apologize uh, so there's no other department I could speak to in regards to finding out how to make these sandwiches myself unfortunately no sir everyone um, that is located in my area we all have access to the same information and as I said I don't have that information to provide you with and I do apologize okay well, I guess we'll go the local restaurant route then. Uh, Radian, would you like for me to provide you with that telephone number for the restaurant nearest to you? Yes, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Radian, this is for the restaurant on Half Airport Boulevard. And that telephone number is 512-926-2500. Nine, two, six, one, two, three, four. Okay. All right. Um, well, thank you very much, and uh, have a nice day. And you're absolutely welcome, sir. And before you go, I'd like to confirm that I have all your contact information correct, and so I have your first name as C-L-A-R-E-N-C-E, -E, last name E-L-M-O-R-E. -E. Is everything Tyson's Corner. This is Eric speaking. Uh, yes. Uh, are you a manager? Uh, no, sir. Um, but I can get you in touch with the manager. May I ask what's the concern? Well, I, I, I need to speak to somebody about, uh, an unpleasant experience I had, uh, at the theater. And, uh, you know, I, uh, hopefully this can be resolved. Uh, sure, I'm sure we'll be able to resolve it. Um, what's the issue with the employee? No, not not an employee. I I don't have any problem with the employees. There, it's uh, it's a facility issue. Uh, okay. I'll be I'll be honest with you. I'm I'm frankly I'm quite angry, and uh, I'd I'd like to not lose my temper, handle this. Uh, you know, uh, reasonably here, but uh, but I I do need to to speak to someone in a in a managerial position. Okay, sure thing, and I uh, I apologize for any inconvenience that uh, you've experienced in the past, and I will transfer you to one of our managers promptly. All right. Thank you. All right. Give me one second.
Thank you for holding. This is Tim. Hello, Tim. Are you a manager? I am a supervisor. How can I help you? Well, what's the difference between a supervisor and a manager? A supervisor kind of supervises all of uh, things that happen on the floor, so kind of control the crew and, uh, you know, help them what to do. Managers are the same, but they also have more responsibilities, like having to deal with uh, money and stuff like that. Well, I might need to talk to somebody with responsibility here, rather than someone that just supervises. Okay, I mean, I can I can set you up with one of them, but can I, is there anything I can help you with? Well, I'll tell you what. I came into the theater the other night to see a movie. Okay. The movie was fine. The staff was fine. But the seats in the theater removed the crease from my slacks. And it's, I, I left the theater, didn't notice it until me and my wife were out near the parking lot. And there I am with my trousers blousing in all sorts of directions. And I, I, I've never felt more embarrassed. And if these are the kind of seats they have in the theater, they're going to, you know, take your pants and 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 crease, uh, remove the crease from them. I I think for the amount of money I'm I'm paying to see a film, I should be getting a higher quality seat. Okay. Um. Do you remember which which theater you were in? Uh, well, your theater. Yeah, but which one? Like one or two? Oh, I don't remember the number. And frankly, okay. I I mean, I, I, I don't think the theater number matters. It's its the same seat everywhere. I can't pinpoint which seat it was that removed okay. the crease from my pants. But okay. I think, you know, at least I should be getting, you know, perhaps a free, a free viewing of a film out of this uh, or, or even an, an additional pair of pants. Okay, I do apologize for that, and... Uh let me speak to one of the managers, see see what we can do for, uh, uh, in terms of reconciliation. Just let me put you on hold for just a second. Okay. Thank you for holding. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so I talked to my managers. They said, um, there's not really anything we can do in terms of compensation. I mean, the, the seat, I do apologize for that, but the seats are just, that, I mean, they're the same all the time. Well, um, hold on here just a goddamn minute. I've, I've been sitting in seats my entire life. I've been wearing pants my entire life. I've never had the crease come out of my pants from, you know, a seat of, of, of any kind of quality. If, if... See, have you... Have you been to this theater before? I've been to, yes, I've been to the theater before, and I haven't noticed this issue, but perhaps, you know, perhaps it's happened in the past. I can't be walking, you know, home to my car, and you have that giant parking lot. It takes 15 minutes to get from the theater back to my vehicle, and I look like I'm wearing a goddamn dress. Well, I apologize for that, sir, but that's really... It there's not much I can do for you there. Well, I, mean, I should at least to... get a, a refund for the film I saw, an additional ticket, and, I mean, maybe I can wear a different kind of pant to the theater. I mean, obviously, you don't have any kind of dress code. I don't know why I'm wearing good slacks to your theater as it is, but I, I, I you know, I mean, I, I'm not going to ask you to replace the pants. I can just iron them again, but... You know, the amount of time it takes out of the day and, and the, the emotional embarrassment of being seen like that. I understand. I did I did talk with the managers and they said they said the same thing. I understand how that that that's embarrassing. And I apologize that that happened to you, but Well, who's the our, manager? Our man we have multiple managers here. I spoke with my manager Dennis. Dennis? Put Dennis on the phone. He is actually in an interview right now. An interview with who? He's applying for another job as we speak. No, he's not. He is hired. We are working to hire more film crew here. More film crew. Well, why don't you hire somebody to fix the damn seats? Sir, there's 
we have thousands of people come through a theater every day, and I've never had this complaint. Is there a certain type of pants that you're wearing that that happened to? Men's pants. Son, have you ever worn a pair of pants? I actually have, yes. I'm actually wearing some right now. Yes, and do they have a crease in them? They do. Yeah, well, why don't you go sit down in one of those chairs and see what your crease in your pants looks like when you get up? I have. I've I've watched movies here before, and I've actually never had that problem. Well, I had that problem, and I'm a paying customer, and a paying customer should be recompensated if he has an issue like this. That, sir, I understand your frustration, but that's really we. It's our seats. Everyone sits in them, and we. What kind of we, pants are you wearing right now? I'm not going to tell you that. Well, I need to know. No, you don't. I need. I do. I need to know. I need to know exactly what kind of pants you have. Sir, I'm not going to tell you what kind of pants I'm wearing. It's not appropriate at all. It's entirely appropriate if the call is about my pants losing their crease and yours maintain their crease. Yeah, but that's it's not really information. Well, you don't I'm think sure I could afford about. whatever uh, pair of pants you're wearing? Is that it? You don't think I'm good no, enough that's not to it wear at all. your pants? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Well, then what kind of pants are they? Sir, I'm not going to tell you what kind of pants I'm wearing. Well, what if I just... Are they Dockers? What kind of... If the Docker... Pa- I'm, I wear Docker pants, and I'll tell you, you know, not a cheaper type of Docker. I wear the same Docker everybody else does, but they lost their crease in your theater, and if you're also wearing Dockers... I mean, I don't, I don't want to get angry at you, Scott. I don't, I don't think this is your fault. It's a problem with the chairs. But if, it's, if it's not a problem with the chairs, then it's a problem with my pants. And then I need to make a telephone call to the pants company. I need to make a call to Dockers and ask them to explain to me why I can't go see Pitch Perfect 2 with my wife without my pants embarrassing me. Okay, well, I will tell you that I am not wearing Dockers. Well, what kind of pants are you wearing? Sir, that's not important right now. It's not Dockers, and that's the pants you are wearing. How much longer is Dennis going to be in his interview? I have no idea. Could be 10 minutes, could be 20. Let me ask you this. Have you seen Dennis sitting in any of the theater chairs? Yes, we've all seen movies here. All right. Well, what kind of pants does Dennis wear? I don't have that information. I don't really ask people what kind of pants they wear usually. Can you see him from where you are? No, I cannot. He's in a different room. What? If you go in the room, is there any way you can tell what kind of pants he has on? No. Can you tell me what kind of pants anyone there wears? I I mean, what kind of operation are you running here if there's no... Uniform. There's no, no, no. There's a uniform. It's just we don't have a specific brand of pants that we have to wear. Well, why can't you just tell me what kind of pants you're wearing? Why? Why does it matter so much, sir? Because I don't. I because I, to be honest with you, I want to come back. I want to see more films. I don't want to sully my relationship with the movie theater, but I can't be coming back there and have this issue with my pants. I have multiple pairs of pants, different types of pants. It's not an issue of, of me not having the right pant. Uh, I mean, it might be in, in, in this particular case. So if you could just give me the information about what kind of pants I should be wearing to your theater to accommodate, you know, these chairs, these decreasing chairs, uh, then, then, then maybe we'll have a solution here. And perhaps you, th- you can throw in maybe one or two free tickets as well. We Well, maybe it was just that pair of pants, that particular pair of pants that you were wearing. Maybe it's not the make, maybe it's not the kind of pants, maybe it's just that particular pair. Were they like an older pair, or were they brand new? I've been medium old. I've worn them probably a year or two. Okay, well, maybe that's the issue, because, I mean, I've there people come in with all kinds of different pants, and they seem to not have that issue. Well, how long have you been wearing your pants? I don't know. It's not... I've had them for a while. Well, how long have you had them? I don't know. I don't I don't know the exact date of when I got them. Well, if you had to estimate how long you've had those pants. Um 6 months. 
Okay. So that what does that put that around Christmas? Yeah, sometime around Christmas. Was it a present? Okay. Sure. Is this a joke or something? It's a joke. I'll tell you what's yeah. a joke. Me walking back to my car looking like a clown with my decreased pants and my wife laughing at me and and I'm, the amount of embarrassment I felt. I'll tell I, you what's, 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 what's a joke, young man, is that customer service now is, is, is laughable. That's the joke, that I can't call a business and if not even get a refund for a horrific experience, an embarrassing experience at your establishment. But would you? But would you agree with me that it like you had an enjoyable time with with the movie, correct? With all the staff and everything, you ha- that was okay. Yes. But it, so it, is it? How is that one hundred percent our fault? I know that it was it your pair of pants that could have possibly been the problem. Could so, so in your in your perfect world with your perfect pants, your secret pants that you won't tell me about, uh, you can't find any sympathy for. I can because I, I mean I know I know how you feel. I, when I was in school, I had my pants ripped and it was not a great experience. So I know how you feel, but it was the pants that was the problem, not the seat. Well, what kind of pants were those? I don't know. They were. That was in high school when I went to a private school. Whatever, whatever I bought back then. Well, all right. I guess I'll just take the the free tickets then. I did not offer you any free tickets, sir. Well, I think that's the bare minimum here. Is going to be a couple of tickets. I can't offer you those free tickets, unfortunately. Well, let me speak to Dennis. Is he still in the interview? He is in the interview. If you want, I can take down a number. No, you just tell him that uh, Clarence, Mr. write this down, Mr. Clarence Elmo is coming down there, and he wants his two free tickets. And I'll be seeing Pitch Perfect 2 again later this afternoon. Uh, no, we're not going to be able to give you the free tickets, Mr. Clarence. Well, is who's Dennis's boss? Uh, he is the general manager. Who's the general manager? His, his name is Glenn. Well, is Glenn there? He is not at the moment. Well, when's Glenn come back? I'm not sure. I don't have the schedule in front of me. Do you have Glenn's home phone number? I don't have Glenn's home phone number. Does Dennis have Glenn's home phone number? I don't have that, and I can't share that information with you, even if I did. So there's just no information I can get here. I can't find out what anybody's pants are or or who I can that's, speak that's to. Kind of, that's personal information. I can I can let you talk to Dennis once he's out of the interview. Well, how you much longer is that going to be? I have no idea. He should be back relatively soon. Well, I'd rather not. I'd rather not call back later. I want this resolved now. It took me a, an hour to calm myself down. I was furious. To calm myself down, sit down, and call in, and and have this resolved. And I'd I'd just like to have it resolved now. Okay, I'm like I'm telling you, it's, uh, we do apologize. I understand the embarrassment. An apology is nothing. Tickets. An apology is nothing if it's not backed with some kind of free thing. At least maybe some sort of concession stand discount. Can you meet me halfway and give me a large popcorn for free? Sir, I can't do that. I've, give a me medium one popcorn. second. I'm going to go see if Dennis came out of the interview really quick. Maybe small popcorn? One second. Thanks for holding. This is Dennis. How can I help you? Oh, thank you, Dennis, finally. And you are the manager? Yes, I am. Okay, well, uh, I forgot who I was talking to before, but he was basically setting me up with some free tickets. Um, that's not the story that I heard. What I heard is that uh, you said that oh. your pants lost their crease when you were watching a movie. Yes. Um, I mean, that's kind of something that naturally happens if you sit down on a pair of... Uh, ab- absolutely not. There's nothing that's that we not... can do about them. Uh, there's really, there's really nothing about our chairs that would cause that to happen. More well, so there, I, chair. I disagree. I've been wearing pants a very long time. I'm pretty sure it's your chairs, and I'll just, uh, I'll take the two free tickets. 
Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that. Um, the only, you know, there's really nothing that we can do for this particular situation. How about a box of snow caps? Uh, unfortunately, we cannot do that either. We... Can I get some of those 3D glasses? Uh, if you buy a ticket to a 3D movie, well, just then, uh, I... you can get those. Give me something here. Give me something. You have no idea what it's like to have to deal with the embarrassment of my uncreased pants for starters and then my wife complaining to me for two nights for me to call and and have this situation dealt with and you are offering me nothing. Unfortunately, that's uh, that's what it's, we're going to have to do here. That's what <laughs> customer <laughs> service is. Nobody's, no free tickets. I can't get the snow caps, the glasses, and nobody's going to tell me what kind of pants they're wearing. <laughs> That is correct. Oh, this is funny to you. It's funny that I have a problem, as it, that a paying customer has a problem. Who is your manager? Uh, my manager is uh, the general manager. Glenn? Is it Glenn? Nothing that we, yes. What's Glenn's home phone number? <laughs> unfortunately, I can't give that to you. I would, then his home address or his last name? Um, unfortunately, there's no way that we can really help you with this particular situation. Had it been uh, a different issue, there may be uh, something that we could do. Well, a different but, issue uh, like what? Uh, something that was service-related. Um, like what? Give me an example. With your, with your pants. Give me an example of something service-related. Uh, let's say that the, uh, the movie never started. That happened. And, uh, that also happened. Give me the tickets. <laughs> okay. Have, uh, have a great day, sir. I, I will as soon as I get my tickets or my snow caps. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to do that. I'm going to have to let you go. Thank you for, uh... Well, I'm going to have to let you give me those two free tickets. Thank you for calling out by Matthew. Uh, hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Well, uh, not too good, to be honest with you. Um, I'm having a bit of an issue today. Uh, I'll let you know beforehand that I have already gone to one Outback Steakhouse tonight and uh, I had a bit of an unpleasant experience but I would like to still go out to dinner and I was thinking about coming there but uh, before I do uh, here's the situation that I'm dealing with um, I've been going to Outback Steakhouse for a long time. I'm a big fan of uh, the restaurant and everything on the menu. And uh, usually I'll, uh, me and my wife will go and have dinner. And we uh, order the Bloomin' Onion as an appetizer, um, which uh, I've noticed in the past couple of years has uh, gotten smaller it's not as big as it used to be which is fine I understand maybe there's health concerns or reasons for downsizing uh, the Bloomin' Onion uh, but what I wanted to know uh, or at least I assumed I, I could do is I went to my usual outback in the area and I brought my own onion which is a larger onion and they refused to prepare it for me. Uh, and then they said I, uh, they asked us to leave uh, because we got, got into an argument about it. So I was wondering if I could bring my onion there to have my larger onion prepared uh, it, at your restaurant in the Bloomin' Onion style. Oh, okay. So, are you coming in tonight, or are you are you um, <clears throat> are you ordering tonight? I don't I don't understand. Well, yes, I was going to come in, but only if I can get a guarantee that if I bring my own onion, you'll prepare it for me. Yeah, we we'll we'll take care of you. So, if I brought in my own onion, you would make the bloomin' onion. If, if you brought in your own onion. Yes. Um. Let me ask my manager real quick. Okay, well, maybe I should just speak to the manager. Thanks for holding. This is Vicky. I'm the manager. How may I help you? Uh, hi. Um, are you the manager of the restaurant? 
Yes, yes, sir. How may I help you? Okay. Well, I don't know if they relayed my question to you, but uh, basically, I had an issue at a different outback, and I was going to come there and replace my regular outback steakhouse with uh, your restaurant. Uh, what kind of meal are we talking about? What kind of food are we talking about? Well, uh, an onion. An onion. A blooming onion. The blue, yes, the bloomin' onion, the which. Bloomin onion. What kind of a uh, wild about where you where you picked it up? Well, I didn't. I didn't pick it up. That's the issue. I was going to come to that restaurant. Um. To well, look. I've been eating the bloomin' onion for years. Uh. It's the. I get that as an appetizer anytime I go, to my regular I'm outback. I'm sorry, sir. I'm really. I'm really. I'm so sorry. So what regular outback? Where do you get this bloomin' onion usually? Well, usually I uh, well I've been getting the bloomin' onion for years, you see, but I've noticed that. When, in, where, where, here or the which one, which location? Oh, uh, the one in Herndon, but I need to find a different. Harlan. No, in Herndon, but I have to find a different outback because, well, you see, I noticed that the bloomin' onions have gotten smaller in recent years, and I was wondering if I could uh, perhaps. Uh, bring my own onion to the restaurant that's a more appropriate size. And so I brought one into the Herndon restaurant, and they told me that uh, that they wouldn't do that. And we got into a bit no, of an argument. No, we onion. don't do that, sir. We can't cook another onion. Well, it, the Just onions... reliable for it. I, I understand that. And that's why it, I'm, I'll make sure the onion is clean before I bring it in. Uh, yeah, I, but we just can't, because we have to have... We can't bring another food and cook it. Well... We it, can't do it. Well, if it'll be like you're getting it from the store. I, in fact, I could sell you the yeah, onion. Yeah, that's, that, that's what I'm saying because we're only allowed to cook products that come out of our vendors. Okay, that well... That product did not come out of our vendors. You, I'm you, sorry. We could set it up so that I'm seen as a vendor and I can bring I'm in... I'm sorry, sir. I really, I really can't. I'm very sorry. Well, if we get... What if I, what if I go to one of your vendors and select an onion... How, how about this? If I come, can I g take a look at the onions you already have and choose one that I think would be more, you know, not one of the smaller-sized onions? I mean, you can come in. We're in Germantown, uh, Maryland. You can come in and order an onion if you like it. That's fine. If you don't like it, would you make a new one? Uh, we usually don't show the onions that we have. I mean... So if I if I came to your restaurant, you would allow me to go... If you order one, ours are, pretty, ours are pretty nice. They're big sizes. They're not small. Well, you might be okay. I mean, they they used to be the size of a Honeycrisp apple, and now they're getting, you know, much smaller. I if if I came to that one, would I be allowed to go into the kitchen? To uh, no, you were not allowed to be in the kitchen. Sir. So you would bring all the apple or bring all the onions out to me at my table. Well, listen to this, sir. We use the same, so they're gonna be. I think ours are a little bigger, but to be honest, it's the same vendors. So this is the big. The this is the big onion. It, yeah, your onions the are onion. the one that they have is the same one we have. Well, okay. Well, then here's here's a question for you. What if I come to your restaurant and get the official large Outback Steakhouse onions, and then I purchase okay. several of them to bring to my regular Outback in Herndon? That way, I don't have to come all the way there for dinner. I can just get several onions now, and you then you want to buy the raw onions. I yes. Sell you raw onions, sir. Well, here's you, you, you. Well, you can give them to me, and then I'll bring them to the other Outback Steakhouse in Herndon. I, uh, sir, that's. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, can you call us tomorrow? I mean, I do need to talk to the partner. Well, I'm I have not manager here. Well, we and haven't. He's not here right now. Well, we haven't had you dinner have, yet tonight. We still have to have dinner tonight, and we're trying to figure out which. Outback Steakhouse will either let us go into the kitchen to choose our onions ourselves or, or you know, uh, bring our own onion in. I don't understand why this is so complicated. Well, you said, well, we just can't, sorry. It's not, I, don't, I don't make the rules. I'm very sorry about that. Sir. But the Outback, Steakhouse, Outback, Outback Steakhouse has no rules. That's right there in the advertising. And I, like, I call in with one question. We do have blooming onions. I just can't let you bring No, them. it says no, well, it says no rules. That's what they say. And I, I, this is the one time I've ever had any kind of complaint or question, and I'm immediately met yeah, with the rule. I understand. Well, the answer will be no. Um, if you do have to talk to the partner, right now is Saturday. We're a little busy, but you can talk to them tomorrow. What if I paid extra to bring in my own onion? Sir, can I please 
Julio, Julio, Well, I just want to know why. This is Russell. How may I help you? Uh, hi, I was already speaking to a manager. I I guess I needed yes, that. I am, I am one of the managers as well, sir. Oh. She's uh, trying to run the dining room, and we're on a, a long way, so she asked me to pick up the phone and speak. Okay. Uh, what, was your, what was your concern, sir? Well, my issue is I, I was um, I had a problem with the size of uh, the Bloomin' Onions at a different restaurant. And so I wanted to bring in my own larger onion to have it prepared. And she's telling me that I can't bring in a larger onion to have it prepared at the store. Um, uh, I, I, unfortunately, um, it was, it's against health code regulations for us to, to do that. Well, that's why I was saying I have, we have vacuum, uh, uh, vacuum sealing equipment here for... Um, meat that we store in our freezer in the garage so I could bring in the onion vacuum sealed from the store or even prepackaged larger onions so that it's not a, a health concern uh, or alternative to that if if I could get the vendor information for the restaurant I could probably purchase my own larger onions directly from the vendor that way you know we can figure out how to Get so, a, so you're saying when you go to a different outback, they give you a small onion, a small blooming onion? Right. Yeah. Well, saying? I tried to bring in my own onion, and they made me leave. Yeah, because um, what it is, um, with the, the way the health department works is that when they come in, we have to actually have paperwork as to where everything came from. So we can only, you know, put things in our fryers that came from vendors that are approved well there's no way to home. no way to leave a note that says this man he's been coming here for years uh, it's, uh you know i'm in a i'm a loyal customer of outback steakhouse um a way to leave a note for the health department that says the health department would not care how many times you came here they would literally find us a lot of money and probably shut our doors if we did that now is that what if, if, if you were coming here for dinner i can guarantee i can assure you that, uh, the onions that we do have that well the other manager are, are quite large the other manager said that I could m possibly come into the kitchen to pick out the onion that is used he told you you could come into the kitchen yes we were discussing the possibility that I could maybe go into the kitchen to see the onions before they're prepared uh, and then uh, and then pick out the onion that I like I mean, what she can do is, uh, you know, she can bring you to the doorway of the kitchen. Cause, I mean, you have to have on certain types of shoes to come into the kitchen. What type of and shoes? Also, uh, it has to be slip-resistant shoes. And because of the fact that you don't work for our company, if something was to happen to you while you were in our kitchen, that that would be a, a very big problem for us. So, so I'm sure she wouldn't have a problem, you know, bringing a, a couple of nice-sized onions to the doorway of the kitchen and, and letting you choose your onion. I, I don't think that would be a problem at all. Okay, well, all right. That that might be reasonable then. If I could, if you could prepare some kind of cart and bring out all the onions to the doorway of the kitchen. Now, will I need the shoes as well if I'm only going to the doorway, or do I need do I need the shoes to go in the kitchen? Yeah, I mean, this is not only the shoe problem, it's also a liability insurance issue. Well, I understand, but I mean, if it's just a question of shoes, I have no problem getting the right pair of shoes if it means that we can get to the bottom of this, you know, quite frankly, uh, uh, sort of troubling onion issue. Well, I'm sure it wouldn't be a problem for us to just meet you at the, the doorway of the kitchen. So, I mean, we, we couldn't bring you all the way into the kitchen, but we it would not be a problem for us to meet you at the doorway to the kitchen to, to show you some of the onions that are cut. So you can definitely pick out a, a nice one of the size that you like. Well, that would that's be that would be fantastic. I'll... I'll yeah, uh, that, would be a, that would be a problem. And what time do you close? Um, we close at 11 o'clock this evening. Okay, well, I'll head over now. I should be there in about an hour and a half. All right, perfect. Yeah. Uh, now, what, do I need the shoes or do... No, you. Uh, what they're going to bring them to, you'll still be on the carpeted area right at the edge of the kitchen, so you'll be fine with any... Right. One, one pair of shoes and uh, uh, just the one pair of shoes. I don't... I, can, I only need to bring one pair. 
No, no, you don't need to bring any. She, she's going to come to the doorway of the kitchen. Okay. And, and meet you at the doorway of the kitchen and, and let you choose your onion. All so right. Well, that sounds good. I'll tell you what. I'll bring one of my onions just in case. And okay. you, that way, if there's any, if, you know, maybe the onions aren't as big. Because the I'll be honest, the other Outback Steakhouse, they said that their onions were quite large as well. But they were the same size. That they've been the last couple of times, so I'll bring my onions just in case, and uh, and we'll take a look. And if none of those look good, maybe we'll use my onion, and right. uh, just this one time though. All right. Uh, so is that a promise that we can do it that way? Yes, but when you get here, I'm the the manager on duty in the front. Her name is Vicky. Okay. So when you get to the host stand, if you just ask for Vicky, she'll. Take care of it from there. Okay, well, I'll be I'll be the man with the extra pair of shoes and the large onion in a Ziploc bag. So uh, right, my name's sir. Clarence. I'll be I'll be in there about an hour and a half. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, thank you. See you soon. All right, sir. Thank All right, you. Good, sir. Thank All right, you. Good, sir. Finish on this, is Taylor. Uh, hello. How are you? I'm fine. Um, I, I, I need, uh, I guess, uh, some assistance here. Uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, it was, uh, my birthday, and my family purchased for me, um, a, a new pair of walking shoes, uh, uh, which they, uh, purchased at your store. And, uh, you know, the shoes are specifically for going on walks in the morning, which I usually do just after breakfast. And I have already another pair of shoes that I wear for just around the house or maybe for running errands, as you know, in addition to... I guess more more casual or, or or formal wear shoes, but uh, I requested uh, from my family as a gift um, a pair of shoes specifically for going on walks in the morning, and they got um, a pair of Asics Asics uh, shoes uh -huh. uh, there. And I've been using those for the morning walks, and at first they were comfortable compared to um, my casual shoes, which I had used before. But I've noticed that uh, often I, I, uh, when I would take these walks in the morning prior to this, it would take me about 30 minutes to go, you know, just down to the end of the block and then come back. And now with the newer shoes, it's it's only about 15 minutes. And I, I don't think I'm doing anything different. I think it might be the shoes. Uh-huh. So you think the shoes are making you walk faster? I Well, yes. And I don't know if uh, that's something that I want particularly. Oh. Uh Yeah, uh, hold on. Yeah, I'm not sure if the shoes are making you walk any faster. Yeah, maybe it might be lighter than what you're used to. The sh the weight of the shoe might be lighter than what you're used to. So that's probably what, what the issue. I don't even know if that's an issue. That might be better for you walking. Well, I mean, I would need to get in. 30 minutes of exercise every morning and now it's only down to 15 because of the shoes. Ready? You think it's because of the shoes? Well, that's the only thing that's changed. Uh, yeah. I don't know what to tell you if that's... Well, is there a way to slow the shoes down? Um, the shoes aren't making you, like, shoes don't make you faster. 
like I said, I would probably think it's just the, the weight of the shoe. It's not making you go any faster. It's just you probably feel like you're going a little faster. Well, it's the time has been cut in half. It went from a 30-minute walk to now it's a 15-minute walk. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you about that. Well, I, I just, I guess, need some advice on how to maybe modify the shoe so uh, the sh shoe, like, like I said the shoe's not gonna make you walk any any faster well it is or slower I mean it's make it, it's making me go too fast and I don't think that I'm I'm getting the right amount of exercise now well if that's the case um, you could walk a further distance and then then that would make the time a little bit longer. Well, I'm worried about getting lost in my neighborhood. That's oh. why I only go to the end of the block and then come back. I, I'm familiar with that. You can go to the end of the block and back twice. Well, I don't know. That seems a bit boring. I, didn't, I mean, I don't... I, not that I'm going on the walks for excitement. It's... It's just for exercise, but I mean, I, to do the same walk twice, I, I need a, a bit more stimulation than that. I mean, it, the, I, I don't think it's the walk that's the problem. It's the shoes, the too fast. Oh, yeah, well, I, I don't know what to say about that. Well, if there's no way, if there's not a, a different way to lace the shoes that you could recommend or a way to weight them down, do you have any weights that you sell to put in the shoes? No, sir. Is work um, you can go to like a sporting goods store and get uh, leg weights. Well, it's not my legs, it's the shoes. Yeah, the shoes won't have weights for those. Um, can you maybe recommend a pair of shoes that says comfortable but on as fast? Uh, the, sh uh, the shoes don't have a speed. Well, they do, and they're too fast. I'm sorry. I got this, like I was saying, the shoes don't really have a, a speed. Yes, they do. The two, these shoes are too fast for me. I mean, Hold on just a second. I'm I'm practically running in them. Um hold on just a second please. Okay. Thank you for holding this around speaker. Hello? How you doing, buddy? What what's wrong now? What's going on? Um uh well I explained before my family got me a pair of uh walking shoes uh at the store um a couple of weeks ago and I already um, you know had shoes that I would go on a walk in um before down to the end of uh my block and then I would come back and uh that was about a 30 minute walk and now it's down to being a 15-minute a walk with the new shoes. And I believe the new shoes are, are too fast. Um, and uh, the other salesman suggested that maybe they're too light. And yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. I was going to say either, it could be either two factors. Either you drop some weight and you're feeling a little lighter, which is a little healthier. And you can walk, like meaning you're walking a little faster. Or the shoes are light, so light that it's feel like you're not even pulling weight. So maybe the shoes that you were wearing before was a little heavier, which was holding your weight back from going fast. That's probably what that is. But if it, if it's making you go faster, that's a good thing. That means you you need to further out your distance. If you want to go more, you got to further out your distance. That means you you know you just getting a little lighter because you walk every day, right? At the end of the block, about thirty minutes. Yes. Well, that's I, yeah. I, I was I don't that's I, a good thing. That's not a bad thing that you that that you're walking faster. That's not a bad thing. Well, it is if now my walk is only fifteen minutes instead of thirty minutes. That's only but half. You're walking, 
you you're you're walking the exact same distance that you were before. Right. Okay, so then that means yeah, you drop some weight, or the shoes are real light, and the shoes that you had before was heavier. Well, I mean, the walk is supposed to be thirty minutes. Is there any way? I asked if before if there was any way to make these shoes heavier, perhaps. I can. I mean, I can drop an insole in there, which would you know a little thicker insole, which is called our athlete's performance insole, and it's, it'll make the shoe at least a little heavier. And but I mean, we're missing fifteen minutes. I don't know if. Will that do it? And that, means, that means you're getting healthy, man. You're getting healthier. Well, I'm worried you, about not getting enough exercise if it's only 15 minutes in the morning. Nah, that shouldn't be. If you're walking the same distance, it should be, should be the same exercise. But I can tell you that if you walk, if 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 you're not extending your distance and you're just walking the same distance, yeah, you you do need to extend it. You know, maybe you need to do it twice. That just means do it twice. Right. That's to add up to 30 minutes. Like when you walk, like when you walk around your neighborhood once and it would take 15 minutes and then you walk again and take another 15, there go your 30 minutes. Well, he suggested that before, but I don't I don't know if doing the same walk twice. I mean, that yeah. seems I mean, there's n- I mean o- other than that, it's not very stimulating. We, there's no other than that, there's nothing else that we can really, you know, tell you because a shoe can't make you walk faster, you know, only your weight and 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 you can make yourself walk faster. Well, I think it might effort. it might be that the shoes are more aerodynamic than the other pair. True. I mean, but like I said, that we can add an insole if you want to come in. We can add an insole. We can look at it. But right now, we we. I mean, I don't know what to tell you why you're walking. Why you 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 know maybe you need to extend your distance. Is there anything we can add to the outside of the shoe to maybe if it's too aerodynamic? No, I know. That, I know. If you go to Sports Authority, they have these little weight bags that you could tie around your ankle, which will give you more muscles in your legs when you walk. Well, I don't want more muscles. I, I, I'm just trying to go for a 30-minute walk to the end of the block and back. You need to make it twice. I, there's no way. I, I, I don't. I can't tell you. I'm not that professional to tell you what to do. It, you know. The shoes, just because you got a shoe and it make you walk faster, I don't, you know, only thing I do is put you in the right shoe that fits you, whether it's light or heavy. If you say you want heavy, we can get you in a heavy shoe, but that's all we do. We just a shoe store that sell the shoes. We don't know the scientific facts of why. Maybe you need to talk to a trainer, call the gym and talk to a trainer, and maybe they can tell you. A health trainer. And they'll be able to tell me how to add weight yeah, to these shoes? To you. No, it's not the shoes. So you thinking it's the shoes? It's maybe you know it could be your 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 um your effort. You might you might be you know a little healthier now, man. So you can go a little, couple rounds now. Well, I I mean I've been going on these walks for thirty five years, and it's always been a thirty minute walk. I don't I don't think I would have that much of a change in my my ability to walk in you know just a matter of you know a day where it changes from being a 30 minute walk to a 15 so i mean i'm 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 almost certain that it, the shoes are too fast um and i you know i mean i'm not the shoes don't have a speed though so how is that possible well there has to be i mean it might not have a speed setting but the shoes have a, a speed uh, a factor of some sort that make me walk you know twice the speed that i was before yeah, well, look, just call the. I tell you what, buddy, just call. Like I said, call to a gym, call to like to like Gold's Gym or or like Lifetime Fitness or something, and ask to talk to a nutritionist. And you tell them, explain your story to them, and see what they say. So I should call Gold's Gym and tell them that yeah, call, f- call the finish line said that their shoes. So Gold's Gym has a, a, sh- a shoe specialist that can tell me how to make the shoes. No, you probably need to go online to find a shoe specialist. All we do, like I said, all we do is get you, we, we get you in the right shoe that you need, light or heavy, and then, you know, we can't tell you, we're not a doctor, we can't tell you exactly what shoe you should have when you do your walk. Well, are, are the, let, let, let me ask this, are the ASIC shoes a particularly fast brand of shoe? 
Yeah, it's a light. It's a very light. The Asics are are made very light, so it will it will feel like you don't have shoes on at all. Oh well, I've tried that, and I that even when I don't wear the shoes at all, the walk is only thirty minutes. That's when why. You, when you. Yeah, I mean, I try wearing your do this for me today. Try wearing your old shoes, okay? Oh, I you did that. Walk, I did that. It was it, thirty. And it took thirty minutes. It did. It's the new only the new shift. I go no shoes, thirty minutes. Old shoes, thirty minutes. New shoes, fifteen minutes. So yeah, see, it's the shoes. It's, the shoes are light, man. The shoes are just too light for you, buddy. But you even need to bring them back in, and we need to get you in a heavier shoe or add an insole. Well, if I even if I wear no shoes, it goes back to thirty minutes. Yeah. So, that's what you want, right? Well, isn't that what you Well, I want what you want? I want it to be 30 minutes. I would like to have a 30 minute walk in the morning. Okay, so then like I said, you need to either come in so we can uh, get you a, a heavier shoe or you need to wear your old shoes. No. What shoe is it? Is it a New Balance? The old shoe? Or the, new? the new shoe? Is it it's the new an A6 shoe. It's an A6? Yes. Maybe you should come in and try Brooks. You got them from Finish Line? Uh-huh. Well, okay. My fa- I haven't been there. My family got the shoe for me from, they said, Finish Line. It was a gift. Uh-huh. You, are you looking at the receipt right now? No, that's why I called to ask. I don't have a receipt because it was a gift. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I kind of, but I, no, I, I kind of, we kind of got, we're getting real busy, so I got to, you know, it's only one of us here, so I got to help these customers. You want to just call back in about an hour or so, or call, like I said, call to a gym and tell, explain to them your situation. Do you have a gym you recommend I call to ask yeah, about? Yeah, call, 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 uh, call Gold's Gym. Which Gold's Gym? Any of them. Anyone is, is fine. Would you have a person you could recommend to Gold's Gym that could help me with the shoe issue? I don't. I don't. You probably have to go online and look for a shoe specialist. Well, really, I was just looking for a way to slow these shoes down. I don't want to, you know, go to a gym. I, I would just, you know, I'm not even looking for a refund here so much as a way to you know, adjust these shoes so they're not as fast. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't I know. Like I said, I got to help these customers out, sir, because we have a store full of people, and I can't, we shouldn't be on the phone for more than 30 minutes, and we've been on the phone for about 40 minutes. Um, well, okay. I, I, can you tell them to come back I, until we can, I mean, I just need some advice on how to, maybe, you know, I, 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 we can't do weights. Hello? Costco Food Court, how can I help you? Uh, hello, how are you? Good. Oh, that's good. Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Yarida, how can I help you? Well, um, I have a question, and, uh, I called, I called in before, um, but I was speaking to the customer service department, and okay. and they referred me to you to the store. They told me to call the store directly, and they told me that they did not have any information on uh, a, a product uh, uh-huh. or several products that I was looking at. Basically, a line of products, a certain category. Uh huh. Um. I don't I don't know if you have any of the information. Just just give me one second because this is the full core. So pretty much the information that I have over here is about pizza and hot dogs. So I just gonna transfer you to the front and you can talk to any man your supervisor, okay? All right, well okay. Okay. Just give me one second, okay? All right. Thank you for calling Costco. Tell you speaking. Hello, how are you? Good. How are you? Um, not too bad. I, I keep getting bounced around here. I, uh, how can I help you? Well, I have a question. 
about mm-hmm. um, about a specific uh, well, I wouldn't say specific product, but a, a product question, and I uh, I called in to okay. the uh, the call center. Okay. And what they told me is that they didn't have any product information, and that I would have to call. What product are you looking for? Well, uh, I have some questions about. Um, about kidney beans, and and he, he, here's what happened: is uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went to my physician okay. f- for my my regular six month physical. Okay. And he told me that I needed uh, more vitamin K. Now, vitamin I, K. Vitamin. So you're you're looking for vitamin K. Well, that's sort of. Uh, that's where it started. Um, so uh, initially, what I did was I said, uh, you know, that's that's great, vitamin K. Um, uh, and I went to the pharmacy to get some vitamin K supplements. Now, what I was told at the pharmacy is that it's better to get your vitamins from uh, food. And, okay. And to not supplement uh, to not use, um, you know, different different supplementation if if it's uh, you know an option to get your vitamins from from your regular diet. So I consulted with another friend of mine who I've known for. What? Are, but how can I help you, sir? What are you looking for exactly? Well, uh, well, that's that's what I'm I'm telling you is uh, I I spoke to my other friend who I've I've known for years and he he knows quite a bit about. Uh, about nutrition and and all sorts. He was uh, a gymnast, actually, back well when he was in college. Um, and Hold on a second for me, please. Okay. Uh, well. Hold on. Okay. Hold on one second. With so many online travel centers, hi, sir. Yes. I'm going to transfer you to the pharmacy. Hold on. Well, I don't need to speak to anyone in the pharmacy. Okay. Um. Uh, what I'll explain here is that, um, you know, so where were we? Uh, I, I, I had to find the vitamin K from food sources. That's why I decided not to go with the supplementation. And uh, my friend, um, he tells me that one of the, the very best sources of vitamin K, believe it or not, is kidney beans. Okay. And uh, and actually, I found this out as well. Uh, the K does not stand for kidney beans. There's no relation. Um, I made that mistake. I felt quite foolish. Uh, <laughs> I tell you. Um, anyhow, you know. I mean, I I, I guess. So I you're looking for kidney that. beans? Well, I'm looking for kidney beans, but he, here's my problem: is I I decided on the kidney beans, and I went. Okay. Uh, Hold on a second, please. Hold on. Okay. Value on vitamins, beauty products, and more. The trip to the drugstore. This digital photography. But one thing. Boss Fellows, I can help you. Hi, is it, uh, is this the same woman I was speaking to a second ago? No, she's uh, she's actually very busy right now on the front end. What can I help you with, sir? Okay, well, I was explaining to her that uh, several weeks ago, I went to my physician for. Um, my regular six month uh, okay. checkup physical okay. and um, you know we, we looked at uh, all sorts of things and uh, what he tells me is that I have a vitamin K deficiency okay. and so uh, you know I, I make note of that and he, he suggests perhaps taking a vitamin K supplement okay. so what I did is I went down to uh, my local pharmacy, and I, I looked at some of my options for supplementation. And uh, what a young man uh, told me at the pharmacy was that it's uh, it's actually preferable not to take supplements, um, but instead to get uh, your vitamin K uh, from food sources. And uh, not only is it... Um, you know, better for your your physical health, but also e- economically speaking, um, you'll save money um, by by you know. Um, yes. Okay, I understand that, sir. Finding your vitamins uh, through through the food. Okay. 
So uh, I, I spoke to a friend of mine who I've known for a very long time, um, and his name is uh, George, and he knows quite a bit about uh, nutrition and, uh, and health and these sort of things. He was an athlete uh, when he was younger. He's in very good shape. And he tells me that, uh, that one of the best sources of vitamin K is, in fact, uh, kidney beans. Okay. Um, we sell them. Is that what you need to know, sir? Well, that, yes. Uh, I, need, I need specific information about the kidney beans. because. What do you need to know, sir? Well, here's what happened. Is I, I said kidney beans. That's interesting. Um, which, by the way, I was explaining to the other woman uh, before we got disconnected is that, uh, you know, the, the K and vitamin K, I, I foolishly thought that it stood for kidney beans after he told me that. And, uh, you know, I mentioned, I mentioned that to... Uh, an, another mutual friend of ours, this man. Um, what in case potassium? This man Eugene, who, uh, who, uh, you know, and and he, of course, he laughed at me. It was, it was quite embarrassing. But um, okay, sir. Well, uh, I went to my physician, and uh, you know, I didn't go to him. What I did was I I called him back uh, during a, a follow up after you know I saw him uh, several weeks ago when we first found out about the the vitamin K issue, and I told him you know everything that uh, that my friend had told me about the kidney beans, about how it's a better source, and he agreed and. Um, so what I had my physician do is tell me exactly how many kidney beans a day I should be eating. Because okay, but sir, how, how, is, how can I help you with that? Okay. What your physician told you is one thing. What can I help you with? Okay. I also have to go report to another department right now. So what can I help you with in the meantime, like immediately right now, that can help you? Do you need to know if we sell them? We do sell kidney beans. No, oh, I know you sell them. Okay, so uh, then what else can I help you with? Because I'm also not a physician. Okay, yes, I know. Well, I have a physician, and this is what he told me. He says uh, that for my age, and uh, looking at, you know, all the information, all the data he has available to him about, um, you know, my diet and and my health as it stands, okay. is that I should be consuming uh, uh, 20 kidney beans a day. And I said, 20? That's... That's quite precise, and he says, "Well, that's the exact number we have. We have the uh, the options available now to to determine exactly how many beans, you know, a man should be eating." And I, you know, I thought that was okay, sir. So let me fantastic. ask you a question: Why are you calling Costco? What can we help you with? Well, I need to I need to purchase um, kidney beans, but I okay, need I need I need to purchase them by count. We, we don't sell that way, sir. We sell them in a can. You sell them in a can. That's yeah. Uh, do you also have bags? No, not bags. We only have um, in them in a can. Okay. Well, then I guess my question is how many beans are in the can? I don't know, sir. You can't ask me that. We don't make them. The, uh, there are six cans, and the whole entire container equals 15.5 ounces. That's the only information I can give you. You can call Goya. Maybe Goya can tell you that information, but we don't... Are you Goya? Them. Who is Goya? No, we're not Goya, sir. We are Costco. You're calling Costco. Was Goya the woman I was speaking to earlier? No, Goya is a company that makes the uh, kidney beans that we sell. The woman who makes the kidney beans works there. No, sir, you're not, you're not hearing me. Goya is the company that makes the kidney beans. Is, well, it, that we sell. Is she there? Sir, Goya is a company, not a person. Goya is a company. Oh. Well, so these 16-ounce bean cans, you, you, you say, does that include the weight of the metal? Sir, I don't know. You would have to call Goya again. But they are 16 ounces. 15.5 ounces. All six cans equal 15.5 ounces. There's multiple cans. Is there anything I can help you with? Well, you said there's six cans. Are these different yes, sized cans? No, they're the same size cans, sir. It's a pack of six. It's a pack of six. And the yeah. whole the whole pack weighs 15.5 ounces. Yeah. Okay. So what does each individual can weigh? I don't know offhand, sir. Well, what's 15.5 
What is the I don't the know. dividend if you were to divide? I don't know. By six. Well, let's think about that for a second. Well, sir, I have to go, so I have to just give you this information, and I have to go. Well, let me ask you this: If mm-hmm. what would you say the average weight of a kidney bean is? Of an individual kidney bean, sir? Yes. I have no idea. Well. Sir, I'm sorry that I have to cut you short, but I have no idea. You would have to call Goya if you want information from us about kidney beans. If not, you can, I don't know, maybe talk to your doctor. Maybe you can buy a bag of kidney beans and just take out eight and eat them separately. Do you but sell kidney beans? They come kidney? in a can and Do they come sell? in a sauce. You sell them as bags? No, we don't, sir. You would have to go to a regular grocery store. Well, I already we talked to my them. physician, and, and, you know, he told me 20 beans. That's that's the number Okay, sir, I understand me. that. Costco does not sell them like that. So well, you would just have to go to a regular store, maybe ShopRite, maybe A&T, buy a bag of Goya be- uh, kidney beans, count out 20, and eat 20. Well, what are these Goya beans you keep mentioning? I don't Goya need Goya beans. Goya is a beans. company, sir. I need kidney beans. Kidney with a K? Doesn't stand for okay, vitamin you, K? Okay, thank you, sir. Have a nice day, okay? But it sounds like All it. All right. And it's confusing. <laughs> Thank you for calling Kellogg's. This is Donita. How may I help you? Uh, hello. Um, how are you today? I'm fine. How are you? Uh, not bad. It's a pretty good morning. Um, well, uh, I just had a couple of questions about uh, Nutri-Grain bars. Uh, okay. The apples, apple cinnamon specifically but i guess uh any kind of neutral grain bar isn't uh it's not too specific but uh okay. I've, I've been buying the uh neutral grain bars for uh several years as um sort of a midway breakfast uh in between breakfast and lunch snack uh-huh. to eat and um well, uh, a couple weeks, well, I'd say it's longer than that. It was probably about three months ago now. Uh, I purchased uh, a box of Nutri-Grain apple cinnamon bars like I usually do at my grocery store. And uh, I ate the box, and uh, after eating it, I realized that they, it was expired. It had been six months expired. Um and uh, you know that wasn't actually a problem because i i thought that the um the bars had more of a of a bite to them after they had expired for several months so and i mean i only discovered this because i thought you know i was eating the bars every day and i thought well these taste completely different than mm-hmm than how they normally do so I wanted to uh, you know see if there was a different flavor or perhaps they changed uh, the ingredients and that's when I noticed that it had been expired for for such a long time Um, Mm -hmm. so what I've been doing is you know looking for more expired Nutri-Grain bars in the grocery store but you know obviously they don't they don't like to keep those on the shelves. Um, and, you know, I've asked them specifically, too, at the store, but they usually will just ask me to leave if I <laughs> if I bother them too much about it. So I was wondering if there was a way where I could order expired bars from the factory. Uh. No, uh, cause we don't hold any products back. Uh, as they're made, they everything gets shipped out. And then um, if the store does have an expired product um, that is us- usually destroyed, we don't get those back. Uh, when you say destroyed, what do you mean? The, the stores will get rid of them because they're not to be selling an expired product. Uh, do you know if they donate them, or no? It's up to each individual store or store chain how they do that. Well, okay. Is there any way that you know that I could maybe speed up 
the expiration process so I don't have to wait, you know, weeks and weeks on end. I mean, sometimes it's upwards of a year before the product expires. No. And I am not aware of any way to speed up that process on how, you know, to get them to, like, expire before their date. Well... I mean, to be honest, I mean, I've been buying the bars for years. I, you know, I, f I feel like if there was, you know, for a loyal customer, there should be a way. I mean, I'm not asking for more. It's in, in many ways, it's a worse product to have an expired version of, of the Nutribrain bars. I mean, most people would consider it to be. Mm hmm Yeah, I mean, let me, I can just, let me put you on a brief hold and see if I have any additional information, okay? Okay. Thank you. Hold on. Hi. Uh, we did look into it. There uh, is no way that we know to, you know, like speed up that process. As we don't rec we recommend that you not eat expired product. And, um, well, I've been eating the, them because you know that it can't well, change the taste and that type of thing. So, we well, I like it. Well, yes, and I understand that. Um, but we just don't have any knowledge well, on how to speed up that process. Know, that's frustrating that I can't even get the bars, but then you're telling me that I shouldn't enjoy them the way I prefer to eat them. Well, that is our recommendation. We don't recommend that, but if you choose to eat that, that is entirely up to you. Well, I think a, a lot more customers would prefer a bar that wasn't so soft. Well, I can certainly uh, pass on your thoughts and share those with our management teams. Well, I don't know why you have to make them so soft. I mean, I'd, I'd been eating them already, and they were fine, I guess. But when they were much harder, it was a better, it had a better flavor to it. Okay. Well, you know, and I can add that in with my notes today as well. Well, what are these notes? Where do they go? Uh, they go to our different management teams. They do look at all of that. Well, if they look at it, will they be sending me expired? I mean, where, I, I don't understand why I can't get the neutral grain bars are the way I like them. Well, um, we don't hang on to any products. It all gets shipped out. Uh, and so it would be the stores that would be able to have expired products. Is there any way that you could call the st call stores or, or get a list of who's had shipments, uh, you know, not for a long time? No, there is no way I can look up the shipping and we just, you know, it's just by store and distribution center. Well, what are the what are the distribution centers? Well, each store has their own. That would be information you would have to get from the stores. That's not information we would have. Well, do the distribution centers do, when the neutral grain bars expire do they get returned to the distribution center i each store is different you would have to check with the store to see what they do with expired products so not all of them get rid of them you're saying i don't know um some of them probably do i don't know if they get sure. donated well, they, it's, do they it's come... up to the stores what they do with the product do they get a refund from from your company for if um I don't know how that's done. What if I wanted to buy the neutral grain bars directly from Kellogg's in bulk and then expire uh, them myself? Unfortunately, we do not have any direct sales to consumers. Uh the only other way to get them like in bulk like that would be like through um Amazon. What? What is I'm that? I'm sorry? What is that? 
Amazon is an online retailer. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to do anything with online. Okay. Well, hmm. How can we solve this problem so I can get these expired Nutrigrain bars? You know, the best thing to do would be talk to stores and see. Uh, as well, I tried that is- already, and my local grocery store, they don't. We got into a bit of an argument about it. Yeah, well, and we don't have any product. We don't have any access to the product once it's, you know, well, leaves could, our facility and it's paid for by the stores, by you, their companies. Um, what they do with it is entirely up to them. Could you recommend something that tasted more like, a, you know, an expired neutral grain bar? Uh, no, I would have no. I don't have any idea what would, you know. Now don't they make you try the, the products working there? Well, yeah, we try some of the products. I certainly have not tried all of the products, but we don't have any recommendations for anything that's expired. Well, have you tried the Nutrigrain Apple Cinnamon Bars? Not that particular one, no. Oh well, do you know someone who has there? Um, no, I, you know, there's about a hundred of us. I would have no idea who's tried the apple cinnamon neutral bars. Is there any way you could ask? Uh, no, because we're all on calls. Um, what? At this point, is so. There, is there a department that handles uh, testing, maybe tasting the products, and they would have a better idea of you know, what I could purchase that would taste more. Because, you know, honestly, I'm I'm very tired of having to wait around for months and months on end for these neutral green bars to expire when I just, you know, I want to have my in-between breakfast and lunch meal now. Yeah, and, um, you know, we don't, you know, we test the product to make sure that it tastes like it should when it's fresh. We don't do anything about uh, testing any expired product to see well, what, it tastes, how it tastes. it tastes better that way is what I'm saying. I and mean, I understand that I can't that's be, how it I tastes can't, better to you, but... I can't be the only person that feels that way. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm certain I'm not the only... You know, I, I can't be the one that's discovered this. You have a oh. lot. You have a lot of people that prefer the bars this way. I just think it's kind of ridiculous that there's no way to order them either at the store or, f- or from the company. Yeah, because we don't we don't ship out or sell expired products. Well, if the better, so if, I mean everything gets shipped out. As it's made. Well, if the better that way, in a way, it's almost like they're not, you know, expired. They're just finished. That's the end of the the making process. Yes. They're made and they get shipped out. Well, they're shipped out not done. They're shipped out prematurely. They should be shipped out once they've developed more of a bite to them and they're not so soft. Okay. Yeah, so I understand that's your individual taste. Um, well, there's a lot of... I'm sure there's a, plenty of other people that feel this way. Well, I can you know, just get this passed on up to our management teams. Well, can I speak to them? Well, no, we're in a call center. We are not at the factory. So how can I speak to the factory? Uh, there really is not a way. The only way is for us to enter your thoughts into our notes and get those passed on up to our management teams. Well, how likely is it that they're going to release some, uh, you know, an expired version of the apple cinnamon neutral grain bar? They will. I have no idea what they, how they would do that. Well, I mean, what are my chances here? 
of being able to get expired bars? Sure. Oh, probably really low. Well, I don't like the sound of that. Maybe there's just... Maybe it's, you know, if I did something different than... How, do you think maybe one of the other flavors would expire faster? No, they're all tested to see how long they, uh, a shelf life they would have. Wait a minute, hold um, on. When you say they're tested to see how long... We, yeah. So each, when each product is developed, we um, so if they test also them, see, see how long the shelf life would be. Okay, that's and perfect. So you have these test bars sitting around that are they're waiting to see how long it takes for the test bars to expire, and then they do, and then presumably you get rid of them. But if you have those test bars there, I'm sure they have one from... Every batch is there any way to purchase those test bars? I mean, I'll pay for I'll, no. I'll pay for the shipping. I have no issue with you know paying for paying for the product. Uh, you know, I don't. I'm not looking for you know free. Oh, I understand that, and but they're not each group is tested. I mean, it's tested when they're first developed. Um, well, and I, I don't know. Are they constantly, they're making new flavors all the time, correct? Well, uh, I'm sure that they try to develop new flavors all the time. So there's always testing going on. I, I don't know how that's done, because that's all done in the factory. Well, presumably. And I don't have, I don't have any idea how... They test well, presum- the bars. Presumably they have, I mean, somebody's employed to find new, you know, neutral grain flavors. So if, if that's what they're doing, I'm sure there's, you know, I mean, always new testing. I mean, if you see in commercials, <clears throat> commercials for any kind of food product where they show a factory, they're always doing, you know, new experiments on flavors. If you watch on the television ad, so I, I'm I'm assuming you have testing going on. You know enough that there would be expired test bars. Oh, and around, we around the and factory. like I like I said before, we recommend that expired product not be sold, and. Well, that's so just a recommendation. I don't think, I mean, if it's a health concern, I'm, I'm sure I'm fine. I've been needing them for a long oh. time. Now. Yeah, but we would not sell you any products that would be expired. Well, I mean, it would be special just for me. Just, I'm not, I wouldn't, this isn't a, you know, official company policy. That's why I'm calling up to handle it personally. And, yeah, and they would not ship out any expired bars. I mean, when does the expiration label even, when is that's printed on the box? If I'm buying, you know, the bars directly from the factory, they're not even in a box yet. So I don't even understand how someone would know that they're expired other than me while I'm eating them. I just... No, what my what I the information that I have access to, and what we, information is you know, that? Does do it not, say we do not sell expired bars? Well, does it say that at the factory that the expiration dates are already printed on there? Yes, they are. We have to print an expiration date on them, but only when they go into the box. No, when they are wrapped. That is also stamped on there, on the wrapper itself. Do you know how long, is there any flavor that has a shorter? No, they all have, the shelf life is eight months, and they all have the same shelf life. Do you th- okay. Well, I'm, if I left them in the garage, or maybe, what, what, is, what, what happens in the expiration process? We just we guarantee that it is fresh. After that date, it is 
probably most likely not fresh. I don't know how you could speed up that process. Okay, I well, don't what, have... what does not fresh entail? What does that mean? What's What changes in the bar? That, I have no idea what changes in the bar. It can be the, the freshness of the bar overall. It can affect the taste. Um, you know, there's several components that it could affect. could affect the, te- the texture, the taste, and the freshness, overall freshness of the bar. But what does that mean? It means that it changes. It can change after the date. But how does it change? That I don't know. I don't know how the process, what the process is that changes it. Well, I'll tell you, it definitely is a completely different bar from, you know, the ones where you just open them up from the box when you get home. Hmm. Well, I really don't know what to do here. Do you have any suggestions? No, I don't. I really want those expired bars. I have no recommendation on how to get any expired product. Okay, well, um, and there's no way I can speak to the factory, huh? No. Or any of the food testers? No. All right, well, I guess I can try the grocery store again, but yeah, not particularly fond of me at this point. But um, I guess uh, have a nice day. And, uh, All right, well, thank you for calling Kellogg's. You have a nice day, too. Okay. Bye. Uh, Okay. Bye. Uh, uh, okay. Bye. Uh, Platform, train, or bus. Hello. Please do not keep it to yourself. Tell a police officer or an MTA employee. All of our customer service representatives. Metro Miss Megan, how may I help you? Hi, I had a, a question about my Metro card. Yes. I I wanted to know uh, when it uh, expires. You have the card with you? Uh, I, I'm sorry. What? What's that? You do you have the metro card with you? Oh, 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 yes. I have. I have a metro card. As I don't need to buy a metro card. You see, I I need to to see um how how much time is left on the card so uh, if I, for, for how much longer I can use the card you see okay look at the card uh, yeah there's an, there's an expiration date on the card well I have I have the card you see I don't need to purchase one I need to know yes look at your card you have to look at the card sir and look at your expiration date well, and that tells me so if i have if i have the uh, the thirty day card the uh, the expiration on the card tells me when i can if uh, w- uh when i need to uh add more uh time uh to the card right well where d- where does it say that on when did you add it money? When did you add money to this card? How do you refill it? Oh, at the uh, at the machine at the station. Okay. Uh, like and everybody when did you else. Add well, I'm, when I'm, did you add money to the card? I'm not. I'm not too sure. Okay. Hold on one moment. Here, pick any car, but then stay put. Changing cars while the train is moving is very dangerous. Check for schedules, get fair information, and even find out about service advisories. In addition, you can... Uh, are you still there? Hello, sir. How can I help you? Uh, are you still there? I, I, was, no. I was calling about uh, my, my, my card, you see. 
you have a you lost the car, sir, or what happened? No, I was already speaking to somebody. Yeah, this is the first time we spoke. So, how can I help you? Oh well, what's your name? Scott. Scott. Yes, sir. Okay, Scott. Uh, well, I wanted to know um, when, when my card uh, will expire. Have the card in your hand. I already have a Metro card. You see, I I don't need to purchase one. I, what I need to to know is. Uh, how 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 much time I have left on the card? Okay, did you just put money on it and want to know that time, or you can't read the expiration date that's on your card? Well, I I put money on it. I I just I'm not sure when when it was. Okay, what's the serial number of the metro card? The ten digit number under where it expires. The ten. Is that on? Is that on the card? Yes, it's on the card. It's under the word expires. It's the ten-digit number. Oh, uh, hold. Let me see here. It. On uh, which side of the card? It's under the word expires. Well, let me. Yeah, I'll. I'll read the card to you, and and you tell me. Sure. It, it says, get a grip. I just need the numbers, sir. I don't need the, the words. I need the numbers to read the serial number. And then the next line is, and avoid a slip. And there's some, there's some smaller words under that. Let me look here. Uh... Underneath, underneath that, it says, uh, uh, "Use hand carts or of uh, st uh, hmm, stains. Use use caution on stains, and that's all it says." Sir, there is some numbers on the metro card. I need you to read the numbers. I don't think the words is not going to help me. I need the number. The, uh, the number? Uh, well, I only have a one card, so I'm, uh, I'm assuming it's number one. Okay, I don't know what kind of card you have, sir. If it's not a half their metro card. It's a yellow It's the, It's the yellow one. It's the yellow card. The okay, yellow. so it has a number on it. And if it do, if you can't see the number... Maybe it's scratched out. It's unreadable. You would have to mail it in or take it to the office. Well, what's, where's the number on here? I can't read the card, sir. You have the card in your hand. Right. I don't know what the number is. If you can't read the number, maybe it's scratched off. Well, let me get let me get my glasses here. I'm wearing my wife's glasses. Sometimes they don't, you know, she doesn't have the same prescription. Let me, let me try Okay, there now I now I can see it. Yeah. Okay. So it says, "Get a grip and avoid a slip." Those are the big words. And then underneath that, it it says, "Use handrails on stairs and escalators." And then there's some more there's some more text above that. Let Sir, I only need the numbers. The numbers. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, oh, I see here. Uh, e one three three one A. Okay, uh, sir. I don't know what type of card you have. I don't think you have a Metro card. Well, it says Metro it's card it's on it. It says Metro card, and I've been using it for. Is it for accessorizer? No, it's for the train. Okay. Now, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not handicapped. I I, I okay. ride the if same train everyone else does. The same style okay. of train. Yeah. I've been riding it for years. Okay. If you don't, if you cannot read the numbers to me, I cannot help you. Uh -oh. I need the ten-digit number under the word expires. Okay. Oh, expires. Okay. It, well, it, it says here it expires on four thirty sixteen. So that's April zero four. 
uh, 30, 30, and then 16, that's either 1, 6 or 2, 0, 1, 6. I don't know which your computer takes. And then there's... Sir. Your, yes? Sir, I'm going to ask you this one more time, and then I'm going to have to disconnect the call. I need the serial number, the 10-digit number under the word expires. Oh, oh I see here. Okay, it's... uh. Two six, uh, well, hold. I think this is two two billion six hundred thirty three million two hundred and seventy thousand seven hundred and forty five. Hold on, please. To another location using public transportation. Or do you need a schedule for a particular bus route or train line? Perhaps you need to know if there are any service change notices that may affect your trip. If so, you do not have to wait to speak to an agent to access this information. You can use our automated voice trip planner or trip planner on the web at tripplanner.mpa.info. You can plan an itinerary Thank you for holding. Okay, I don't see any value on this Metro card, sir. There's no, there's no money on the card. No, I don't see any value. Okay, well, can you tell me when it expired? Four thirty, two thousand sixteen. Well, that's next year. Yes, it is. Well. Well, I've, I mean, if it, I can can expire, I mean, when you know, uh, uh, when can I use it? it and put money on it and use it whenever you want to. Oh, oh, well, so I can't use it now. If there's... Not until you put some money on it. When when did the money run out? There was never any money on this card. Well, that can't be possible. I've been using it for months now. The card has never been used, sir. Well, hold on just a minute here. I mean, I've I've used this card. This is a card. Me and my my wife uses it sometimes. We go. I, I, you can. I, I can give you the number to the grocery store that I go to, and I use the card to get there. This this. It's impossible that the card hasn't been used. Sir, I can't really discuss anything further with this card because there's nothing on this card. Okay, maybe have another card in the house somewhere, but it's not this card, and there's no money on it. But that's impossible. Okay, well, mail the card in if you think there's money on the card, and they'll let, they'll explain to you what's going on. And would I mail it to the tax office or the the comptroller, who is the responsible party for the cards? Okay, actually, this is only. For New York City Transit and train and bus. So who who if I mail the card to who is the c they care mail of it. who? They mail it to New York City Transit, sir. Okay, well let me grab a pen here. Yeah. And what is that? What is the uh, um? What is your uh postage uh information? Metro card, customer claim. Metro card. Let's see here. M. E. T. Sorry, you'll have to excuse me. I'm writing with my left hand. I usually use my right, but I'm holding the telephone. Metro. Okay. It's um, two Broadway. Card. Two Broadway. 11th floor. Floor 11. New York, New York. Uh, New, New York. New and it's zip code is 1004. New York. And what is the zip code? 10004. One zero. Zero, four. Okay, and then do I make a note that Scott assisted me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Well, Scott, young man, you've been a great help. Thank you. I'll, I'll mail this card off. And, uh, and you know, hope, hope, hopefully we can get to the bottom of, uh, of you know, what's going on, uh, why it's showing that the card has never been used. I mean, that's... Have you ever heard of anything like this in your time as a... Working for the trains? No, but, uh, no, but mail it in, because I can't see it over the phone, so they'll be able to read it once you mail it in. How long have you been working with the trains? 20 years. And you've never seen it, anything like this? No. no. Well, I'll no. have to... I'll have to tell my wife about this. I, I, I mean, can you imagine it? Just a card saying that it's never been used. Here I am. I've been using, using the card every well, day. I, I know. I certainly hope I don't owe owe any money if if I've been using the card and it says that there's no money on there. Should I mail? I, I, should I mail money in with the card? Okay. Well. Thank you very much, sir, and enjoy the rest of your day. Well, if I, I don't know if I owe money or not. Okay, I have no idea, but that's nothing to do with the New York City Transit. That's state or IRS, I don't know. But the IRS? Mail the, metro, mail the Metro card in, and we will investigate what you're talking about. Well, I'll send the card to, to to Broadway here. But I just okay. if I, if I need to send payment as well is what I what I need to know. I mean, if I right. if I should estimate a, a payment or or is it should we resolve? There is that? no estimated. There's no estimated payment. So if you have a regular metro card. There's no estimated payment. Well, uh, in your professional opinion, as someone who's who's been <clears throat> working on the trains for. For two decades now, is do, would I is there a chance that I would owe supplementary fees or or, or some sort of 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 peniality for having? No, I don't think so, sir. Sir, I have to get off this phone. I cannot continue with this conversation. But mail the card in. Okay. Well, I'll send the card in, but not the payment. I, I, I'm assuming we'll handle that. That's good. That's fine. At a further date. Okay, and if they ask for money, I can tell them that Scott said I don't owe anything. I have your word. Yes, yeah, sure. All okay. Right. Have a good day, sir. Well, I have your word that I don't owe any money? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I can tell them that Scott said that yeah. I... And, and they'll they'll believe me. Because if I find out later that I owe money for... I've had this happen before at a blockbuster video about 15 years ago. Sir, sir, again, you're holding up my line. I've already answered your question. I gave you the address. There's nothing more I can tell you. Okay, I have to get up the phone, sir. It's been too long for the same, same question, same situation. Well, they're different questions. It's not the same question. I mean, I... Same question. How much money you have on the car? Same as that question. Well, then we opened up a whole new can of worms here with with this mystery of a of a mystery sir, card. I have to this call. I have to go. Some, some kind of other people waiting on absurd the card conspiracy where the, there's you know it's been in use, but uh, no. Nope. Agents, please hold, and the next available representative will be with you shortly. For quality assurance, all calls are recorded. Please continue to hold for the next available representative. Senative. Senative. Thank you for calling Starbucks. I'm speaking. How can I help you? Um, hello. How are you? Good. How are you? What can I do for you? Uh, I'm doing okay. Um, I, I just had a couple of questions. I was, uh, thinking of coming in there, uh, to get a coffee. I don't live too far away, but the last time I went in there, I was a bit overwhelmed. And it's been a while since I've been, um, I guess, to a coffee shop, uh, and uh, some of the menu items are 
different than what I'm right. used to. If you if you just like a standard cup of coffee, sir, we have that brewed fresh for you. Uh, we don't have anyone in line, so if you'd like to come in, we'd be more than happy to help you. Well, I know I can. If I just wanted the regular coffee, I could make that for myself at home. I, there's no reason to go to a all right specialty coffee store to get. You know, I completely just, understand. If there's anything else we can take care of for you, I can more than happy make it for you myself. Uh, well, I would want to get one of the specialty coffees, but I'm not really sure what. I mean, it's sort of embarrassing. We can, we can make you a standard latte. Uh, it's just espresso and steamed milk. Very simple. Uh, I don't know if you like your like your coffee with cream and sugar or anything like that, but uh, if you don't, we can make you an Americano which is just espresso shopped in hot water. It's very smooth and very similar to a regular cup of coffee. Well, I, I mean, again, those sound... I mean, I'm, I think I'm familiar with those, and I could probably, you know, get those uh, drinks uh, anywhere. I mean, if I was going, again, to a specialty coffee store, I would probably get uh, one of the uh, specialty items on the menu. But okay. I, I'm not really familiar with what any of those are. All right, sir. Um, we have a number of them. Uh, one of the more popular ones right now is a gingerbread latte or a chestnut praline. So it's a specialty drink. If you like either one of those, I'd be more than happy to make it for you. Well, what a, this is where I ran into the problem the last time because I don't know what either of those are. I'm trying to make that one out. Oops, sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, well, sir, you know, another great option is that we have uh, the app on your phone now. If you'd like, you can look through the menu prior to getting here. You can even order it on your phone now as well. So it kind of avoids that overwhelming procedure of looking at the menu and choosing everything. You can do everything now in the comfort of your own home and look through the menu prior to coming into the store. That way you can look at all the ingredients, you can look at what goes into it, and really determine if it's something that you'd like to try or not. Well, that's why I'm, you know, I figured I'd call first so I could get, you know, an idea of what, you know, what kind of specialty drinks that you would have, have there before, you know, and maybe even, you know, place my order now, and, and then I'll come in and I'll say it's, I'll say it's me, and then they can prepare the drink so, that way it doesn't... I completely understand. So we can't take the order over the phone, however. Um, we do, like I said, we do have the app on uh, a smartphone that can take the order ahead of time, and it comes up on our computer here, and we'll get it made for you. Well, that's you what... Uh, it, then I'll, yeah, I'll just do... I'll order it over the phone if I could get a better idea. I correct. I understand, sir. I, I can't take the order over the phone right now for you, though. Why not? It's just part of our policy, sir. It's something that we just don't do at the moment. Hopefully that changes in the near future, but I can't fulfill that over the phone. But we do have that other option for you if you'd like to take advantage of that. Well, I don't see why that's part of the policy. Is it necessarily dangerous to take an order? Not, not especially, but I think a lot of people have issues with giving payment over the phone. There is a security issue with that. I feel most people are uh, attuned to that in this day and age and then there's also the um the problem sometimes you have people ordering over the phone and then you make a mistake of which store that they ordered to and it creates uh an inconvenience for the customer and it can, creates an inconvenience for um maybe the, the customer of ordering a beverage and then not having it ready going to a different store and it's, sometimes it's just a miscommunication however the app does clear all that up because it tells you exactly what store you'll be ordering it from uh it tells you exactly what drink and what price you'll be ordering it from and it eliminates a lot of those issues. And not to mention, it does fulfill that need that you were looking for, sir, where you can look through the menu uh, and find out just exactly what you'd like to order as well. Well, maybe you could just tell me what the specialty drinks are. And, and sure, we have the chestnut praline latte and we have the gingerbread latte right now. Well, what are those? Uh, gingerbread latte is simply, it's a latte with the standard espresso shot and 2% milk steamed with a gingerbread syrup. It's topped with a little nutmeg. And then the chestnut praline latte, again, is just a chestnut praline syrup. It's like a sweeter chestnut um, chestnut flavoring, again, made with espresso shots, steamed milk, and topped off with a little whipped cream. Well, that sounds a little bit 
too complicated. Do you have anything maybe a step down from that? Um, we have a standard mocha. It's chocolate, espresso shot, steamed milk, and whipped cream. That still sounds a little bit too much. Is, is anything... We can remove the mocha and just do espresso shots and steamed milk. And what's that one called? That's just your standard latte, sir. Oh, well, I think that one I could probably just do myself at home. Is there one that's more special? We can do a latte with vanilla. Van and again, it's a vanilla flavoring, espresso shot, steamed milk, and that's it. Well, that's sort of like the chocolate one. It's just it's vanilla instead of the chocolate. And then that's about all the options we have, sir. So there's nothing in between the regular... Not, not especially, sir, because really the only difference is just having flavoring or not having flavoring. Well, can I specify how much flavor? What if I just want some flavor, but not too much? Yeah, absolutely. It comes with a standard amount of flavoring, depending on the size of the drink that you like, so we can always cut that in half for you if you'd like to do that. So I can get it. Okay, so then maybe I'll get a small amount of flavoring, but with a large drink. Sure. And then what we'll do is we'll take the large drink and pour out half of it. We can do that too. Okay, well, let me. Can I place that as an order? Uh, again, sir, I can't do it over the phone for you because I won't be able to accept payment over the phone. If you'd like to come in the store, I'll be more than happy to take care of it for you, though, sir. Well, could you do me a favor and write yes, sir. Write, write down that as an order? Sure. And then I'll tell you it's me. Was there a specific flavor you'd like to choose, though, sir? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um... Just, Was there anything else I can do for you, sir? Well, that's the order I want. And if you can tell me the total now, if you ring it up, then I can write out the check now and bring it One in. One second, sir. Yep. Uh, just a moment, sir. I apologize for the inconvenience, but we don't accept personal checks. Uh, well, I can write you a business check. Um, we don't accept checks, sir. Don't accept checks. Well, what uh, what are my payments? Cash, cash or credit, sir. Oh, I, if I pay credit, I can... Well, I'm not too comfortable giving my credit card number over the phone. Oh, I completely understand, sir. I, I would actually feel uncomfortable taking that information from you. Well, how am I supposed to pay for it then? When you come into the store, you can bring your credit card with you and we can swipe the credit card. Oh. Or if you'd like, I can give you the total of the amount and you can bring the exact exact change in cash if you'd like to do that. Okay, do you have an ATM there at the store? I can take the money. Not at the store, sir, but as a matter of fact, right across the street, there's a Wells Fargo bank. That is, uh, that has an ATM Do you have uh, accessible a... from inside or outside. And then across the street from us, there's also a Bank of America that has an ATM inside or outside. Do you have the number for the Wells Fargo Bank? I do not, sir. Okay. All right. Well, what was the total for the, the specialty drink? Sure. One moment, sir. The total after tax, sir, comes to three dollars and ninety-eight cents. And is that for a small size? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Now, what kind of uh, food options do you have there? Uh, we have scones, croissants, uh, cookies, coffee cakes, brownies. Um, we have lunch paninis, breakfast sandwiches. Um, we have banana bread, pumpkin bread, donuts, morning buns, bagels, a wide array of sweets and a wide array of lunch items, sir. Uh, what kind of, what are the lunch items? I guess it's more lunch. Uh, we have turkey Havarti paninis, turkey pesto paninis, tomato mozzarella paninis. We have peanut butter and jelly bistro boxes. We have peanut tie wraps, edamame hummus wraps. We have some salads, yogurts fruit salad, 
um, Chicken Santa Fe paninis. We have a specialty holiday panini as well. What's that one? Uh, holiday is a turkey and stuffing panini. Oh, are those expired items? Or are they? Uh, no, sir. They come in fresh every day. Oh, they're still making the holiday one. So if that's those are those the only specialty? Uh, yes, sir. Paninis. Okay. Uh, well, I guess I should probably get one of the specialty lunch items if I'm getting a, a specialty drink. Okay. So which one would you recommend? To- I would recommend the holiday panini, sir. It's actually quite delicious. It's a, a good bang for your buck sort of uh, lunch item. There's quite a bit of uh, turkey on there, quite a bit of stuffing on there. I eat it for lunch every day. It really fills me up. Okay, and that'll go well with the specialty. Absolutely. Thing. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I guess if you want to put that one on the list, too... Sure, one second. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, I have Save that order. So after a tax, so the total will come to ten eighty two. Ten eighty two. Yes, sir. All right, and then so you can do that in either cash or credit, and I'll save that order for you, sir. So whenever you're ready, you can come on in, and and we'll take care of the rest of that transaction for you. All right, sir. Okay, well, I'll get. Was my... there anything else I can do for you? Yes, I bring my checkbook down there, and we can't take a check, sir. Uh, is there any way I could cash the check for that amount, and then? No, not at the store, sir. Uh, is anyone there that would take a check, maybe? No, sir. For, I mean, not not an employee, but you know. That I can't speak to, sir. Ten eighty-two. All right. And is it Wells Fargo and uh, is it a Chase Bank? I don't know of a Chase Bank in the area, sir. I know of the Wells Fargo and the Bank of America. I know there's a Safeway next to our store, sir. They might take a check. They might cash a check for you, but I don't know that for sure. Well, the only thing I'm concerned with is I use my ATM card. I have a Chase Bank card. And okay. It, it charges supplementary fee for using a non-Chase ATM. Is there any way... Hey, if, you, if, you, if you bring the check card, sir, the check card will be accepted as a credit card. You can use that as payment, sir. Well, could I get a perhaps a refund for the ATM fee? If I, I, I don't I don't believe there's an ATM fee, sir, but uh, that I don't I don't know what you have set up with your bank. If you're uncomfortable with that, we can find other payments if you have again just a credit card or cash is the only payments that we accept in the store, well, sir. I can go to the bank and get okay. the cash at the across the street, but if I take sure. money out from the ATM they'll charge an extra probably three, maybe four dollars. I understand. Uh, mm-hmm. No, we would not be able to refund that for you, sir. Well, if it wouldn't. Perhaps we could just um, subtract that from the order total. So instead of no, sir, I don't think I'd be able to do that. When ten eighty two, we'll, we'll call it six eighty two. No, sir, I'm not able to do that. Well, it's was not, there anything else I could do for you today, sir? Well, it wouldn't be a refund in that situation. It would just be less. You're, you're correct. I understand. But I wouldn't be able to deduct that out of the price of your purchase based on a, a fee cast by an outside company, sir. That's not something I'm able to do for you. Well, I mean, it. I'm only incurring the fee because your company won't take the check. And the checks of, of good checks, I don't... 
understand why I can't. I mean, the check was issued. Uh, I, under, I understand the inconvenience, sir, but it's not it's not something I'm I'm prepared to do or I'm allowed to do at this point. We are accepting cash. And we are accepting credit cards. Well, is there a manager uh, available? Or? You're speaking to the store manager, sir. Okay. Well, is there any way we could make an exception to either take the check or? No, sir. I don't think so. Well, why why won't they let me either pay with a check or refund the ATM fee? It seems kind of unreasonable. Uh, I under, I understand the inconvenience with it, sir. I don't I don't have information to the policy as to why they don't accept accept the checks. I do know that um, the standard standard payment method is either cash or credit. Um, and if you're willing to do that, I'd be more than happy to take care of your order. Okay. Um, other than that. Those are the options I do have available for you, sir. All right. Well, how about we do it this way, then? If we can't do a refund for the ATM fee on the low end, uh, we'll say it's probably around maybe two fifty, three dollars $3. Is there anything around that price that could be added to the order? Maybe like um, if you have a bag of chips? No, or, no, sir. Like a scone, perhaps? Uh, no, sir. I'm, I apologize for the inconvenience again, sir. But I'm, I'm not. I'm not at liberty to do that for you based on a fee that you would in, incur off of your ATM fee. Is there anything, any kind of discount I could get for you having to deal with? No, that? sir. I'm sorry. None at all. No, sir. I apologize. Well, why not? I'm. I'm not sure what the discount would be for, sir. It would be for the ATM fee. Correct, but there's other options available for you, sir, that you don't have to go to your ATM, and you can also go to your Chase Bank and get cash out without incurring a fee. Well, I don't know where the bank is near there. And I don't, I mean, this is becoming too much of a trip now to go to the bank first and then... I understand, sir. All the way to Starbucks. Yes, sir. So, I mean, the easiest solution here would just to be some kind of discount for that ATM fee. I, I understand, sir, and I, I don't have a discount to give you. Um, I apologize for the inconvenience again, sir. Well, there's multiple. Uh, was, there, was there anything more that I could do for you, sir? Well, I, I mean, I guess it's just, I mean, we have a couple of options. We can either go the ATM fee discount or a free item, perhaps, for the value. Or, or, you, could go, or you could go to your bank, sir, and you can get cash without incurring a fee, or you could use a credit card, or you can use cash on hand. Well, I don't have any cash on hand. I have the check. And, okay. And, and then the debit card. All right, you could even give your bank a call, sir, and find out if you can use your check card in the store. That way it circumvents the whole process. You don't have to you don't have to go to your bank. You can just bring your card right here and we'll put the charge on there. Well, my bank's if very, there's no if there's no fee to that, then it circumvents the whole problem. Well, my bank's very rude when I call them. Oh, I understand, sir. So I don't want to deal with them on the phone again. Okay. I mean I, honestly I Those are, those are the options I have for you, sir. Um Again, if there's anything else I can do for you, I'll be more than happy to try. Other than that, sir, um, we have the I have the order waiting for you. As far as the payments concerned, those are the options I have before you. Oh, it's already um, they've already made the coffee. I, I haven't made anything yet. I have everything saved for you in anticipation of your arrival in the store. Once you're here, we can get the order made for you, and I'll take care of tendering the transaction for you, sir. Oh, what are until they? until the time that you arrive in the store. Are they going? Uh, that's as far as I can take the order. Are they going? Was to, there anything else I can do for you today, sir? Well, are they going to make it before I get there? No, sir. They will not. Well, what if someone comes in and orders what I ordered, and it's the last one? Well, uh, not not an issue, sir. We have plenty of inventory on hand to make sure that that, that doesn't happen. Well, how many? So as soon as as soon as you're ready to be in the store, sir, I'll be more than happy to take care of any business that you would like to have in the store, and be more than happy to have you as a customer. Until then, sir, was there anything else I could do for you, sir? Well, how many sandwiches do you have of the how, the special? I don't know the exact on-hand quantity, sir, but we have a, a couple on hand that we'll make sure we do not run out of the inventory, okay? Well, can you set one aside for Absolutely, me? sir. I'll be more than happy to do that for you. Okay. And was then, there anything else I could do for you today, sir? Well, I just want to make sure that the coffee wouldn't, I mean, that's not something. No, I completely understand, so we'll take care of that. Was there anything else today, sir? 
Well, I guess really it's just trying to figure out a way around that ATM fee. I understand, sir. It can be quite inconvenient sometimes, and I do empathize with you. Uh, as soon as you figure that out, we'd be more than happy to have you as a customer. Uh, if there's nothing else I can do for you today, sir, I'm happy you gave us a call, and we'll talk to you again soon, and we look forward to you coming in the store. Well, he, you have a good afternoon, sir, okay? Well, Take care. I'm thinking that maybe I... Maybe I... Maybe I... Maybe I